Hi, welcome back to your video lecture series. We're looking at chapters two through six, uh, which we're focusing on early civilizations. Uh, for chapter for part one, we looked at the four river valley civilizations, so uh, the Nile River in Mesopotamia, Indus River, and in China. Uh, now we're going to look at the civilizations that arose in the New World in the Americas, which include uh, Mexico and Peru. Right, so these are the um, American civilizations. Now the first one is going to be the one we call the Chavin. Now the Chavin are, are considered the mother culture of the Andean region, which is basically Peru uh, in South America. And we call them the mother cultures because they set up similar characteristics that other civilizations and other empires that came afterwards uh, would adopt as part of their own culture. And originally they had, uh, they didn't really have major cities but what they had was ceremonial centers so these would be like temples where like the people would gather during religious holidays uh to observe religious ceremonies but eventually over time people started living or staying in those temples and they started you know constructing cities around it uh and people lived there you know permanently uh what we're going to notice with the chavin and with the omex which is in mexico is that neither one of them are found near major rivers, which is a very different characteristic uh, compared to what we saw, you know, in Africa, Europe, and Asia. Uh, with the Chavin, we know that they're, they were agricultural people. They cultivated the potato, which is uh, uh, native to the Andes, uh, corn, which they actually imported from Mexico, and also quinoa, which has become much, uh, was, has become increasingly popular in uh, people's diet nowadays. Uh, they also had the only domesticated animal, which is the alpaca and llamas in the New World, the only domesticated animal in the New World, uh, even though they were not as, the, these animals were not as productive as others that we saw throughout Afro-Eurasia. Now here we see one of those ceremonial centers, right, so this would have been like a giant temple. Uh, and if you look at the background, you see that it is a very dry region, uh, which means that for people to survive there and live there and grow crops, they had to have a lot, a lot of irrigation projects, meaning you know they'll dig uh, drainage ditches so that the water will uh, accumulate when it rains. Uh, they'll have wells and canals as well. Uh, they traded, but very, very limited, because uh, remember they're up in the mountains, so it's not really easy to travel long distances when you're trying to cross over mountains. Uh, but they did trade with jewelry, uh, particular stuff made out of obsidian with a very shiny black stone and also made out of jade, which is this green colored stone. And most people were, were farmers. Uh, we also know that they uh, were able to work with metals, like gold, silver, and, and copper. Uh, but unlike other places that learned metallurgy, these uh, this civilization never developed uh, the knowledge to make tools and weapons out of, um, out of metal. Uh, so they kind of stayed with the Stone Age technology, right, with, you know, uh, with stones and with wood, and that's about it. No metal whatsoever except, you know, in jewelry and ornaments. And here we see another example of their high level of artistic work, in this case being a ceremonial pot. Uh, here we see some type of a cat animal at the bottom. Uh, we also know that they were very religious. They called the, uh, you know, they had a cult and uh, they focus on their agricultural gods because obviously these agricultural gods is what you know provides them the things they need to live uh, and that's what would have shamans right which you kind of see here a modern day shaman in peru uh, who believed to have a divine connection with the gods so these people were kind of like chosen uh, to do the prayers and the sacrifices uh, to make the gods happy and generally speaking these shamans and these priests they came from the upper class uh, you wouldn't have poor people as shamans because they would, you know, probably would have to work the land, work the fields to survive day in and day out. Uh, next, we have the Omex. They're found in Mesoamerica, uh, which we call Mexico and Central America. Uh, and they're literally found here on the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, they are considered the uh, Mesoamerican mother culture. Again, meaning that their culture will be passed on some characteristics of their culture we passed on to future uh, civilizations like the Mayans and the Aztecs. 
Now, uh, these people also were agricultural. They had trade, but very, very limited, because remember, they don't have any animals to carry uh, goods across long distances. They never domesticated any, uh, they, or they couldn't domesticate animals like you know horses and stuff like that. Uh, they simply didn't exist in the Americas, and they didn't have the alpaca or the llama either. Uh, so this is the obsidian stone I mentioned earlier. Uh, the Olmecs will make these into sharpened you know, spears, or arrows or uh, knives. Uh, here we have uh, some of the jade stone, right? It's kind of like a greenish looking thing. Uh, and like we mentioned before, most people were farmers uh, and they were very, very, very limited trade. Their main crop that they grew was corn or maize. Now, one of the more unique artifacts that these people left behind are these large statues, large head statues that we see here uh, were carved out of solid rock and weighed, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds, and they were carried over to their resting location as uh, by by slaves. And these um, these head sculptures, uh, they were, uh, we believe that they were, uh, you know, these were either religious figures, like their gods, uh, or their political leaders, like the king, would uh, want his face to be, you know, carved in stone and last for, you know, eternity. Uh, when it comes to science and math, the Omics are pretty advanced. Uh, for example, one of the things that they developed first was the concept of zero. Right now, a lot of civilizations had the numeric system where zero had a you know a place. They also had writing. They were the first uh, civilization to have writing in the Americas. Uh, they wrote in hieroglyphs, very similar to what how the Egyptians would have written. Uh, however, we don't know much about them, or we don't know what they wrote because it's undecipherable. No one has figured out uh, what it is that they were writing, so no one has translated, uh, which is kind of the same thing uh, when it comes to the Indus Valley people, who also you know wrote, but no one else has a, no one has figured out what they meant. Uh, finally, they also had a very accurate calendar that they used for religious reasons. Uh, when it came to their temples, they built mounds, right? Meaning they would just pile dirt on top of dirt on top of dirt. Uh, to kind of make these little hilltops um, and that's where they would hold their temples and uh, they also had they started playing the ceremonial ball game right with a big rubber ball uh, and I believe it was you know like this religious ceremonial game uh, some stories say that the people who lost this game the team that lost would get executed others believe that it was the team that won got the honor of being sacrificed Speaking of sacrifice, uh, the Omics were the first civilization in the Americas uh, to practice something we call ritual bloodletting, where basically uh, individuals willingly chose to stab themselves with these like darts or these uh, knives, uh, whether it's you know in their arms, in their legs, in their tongue, or in their ears, uh, to bleed out as much blood as possible. And it was believed that the blood was necessary for the gods. Uh, to keep their strength, and if the gods are too weak, then these uh, basically it's the end of the world because the sun's not going to rise, the rain isn't going to fall, and the crops are not going to grow. And this is one of those major cultural features that will eventually be passed on to the Maya and the Aztecs, uh, who move on to kind of not only cutting themselves but sacrificing human beings uh, for their gods as well. All right, so that's it for the uh, this. Second part of chapters two to six. Thank you for watching.